All right, so my goal today is to help you guys feel a little bit better about the lesson for 2.4. So we're just going to do a little bit of review over 2.4. There's a few things that I taught you last week. The first thing says, what at the top, class? You do not need to find a common denominator when multiplying or dividing fractions. All right, so don't find a common denominator. The only time you need a common denominator is when you're adding or subtracting. subtracting. Very good. Let's look at the next one. It says, you cannot multiply a mixed number. What do you have to do instead, guys? Good job. We've got to turn it into an improper fraction first, all right? And then finally, if it starts as a mixed number, what does the final answer have to be? A mixed number. A mixed number. Very good. Okay, so the first instructions here ask us to write the fraction as a decimal. What I'd like you guys to do right now on your whiteboards is turn negative 4 30 thirds into a decimal. Is there anyone that thinks you remember how to do this? Should you add, subtract, multiply, or divide? Guys, should we add, subtract, multiply, or divide? divide. You've got to divide, so make sure you are dividing this out to try to get your correct answer. Okay, first things first, don't erase your boards yet. How many of you think the answer should be positive? How many of you think the answer should be negative? Listen, if it starts off as a negative fraction, it's still going to be a negative decimal. A lot of you guys forgot to keep the negative. Here's the next thing that I saw a lot of people do. 33 divided by 4. Is that what I'm supposed to do? No. What's the first number you see in that uh, numerator? 33. No. What's the top number? A 4. So guys, you should be writing 4 divided by 33. How many of you would say you did not do that? If you didn't do that, I want you to erase your whiteboard and fix it for me, please. Okay, then we've got a decimal point. How many zeros should we put? Let's put three zeros. Okay, bring that bottom one up to the top. Okay, so once again, if your whiteboard doesn't look like my board, I want you erasing it and fixing it so it looks like mine. Can a 33 go into a 4? No. no, it goes in 0 times. You can put a 0 there if you want, but you don't have to, okay? Can it go into a 40? Yes. Yes, how many times? One. 1. Very good. 1 times 33 is 33. Bring it down. You're going to subtract. What's 10 minus 3? Seven. 7. Bring down that next 0. How many times can 33 go into 70? Two. two times. Two times 33 is 66. When you subtract, you get a 4. Bring down that 0. This can go in one time. When you subtract, you get 7. I don't have any more zeros, but since I don't have a 0 at the bottom, I'm just going to keep writing more zeros to continue to bring down more zeros. This can go in two times. Two times 33 is 66. Subtract, you get 4. Do you guys see a pattern? Yeah. Yes. Should I keep going? As soon as you see there's a pattern, this is going to be point one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. I can continue going on and on. Or how do I say that this is a repeating decimal? Luke. Correct. Should I be boxing it in and doing all the work at the top? No. no, we're going to rewrite it somewhere off to the side. Okay, I'm going to put it directly underneath my problem here. Point one, two, and then I'm going to put that line on top. Now, once again, is this positive or negative? negative? This is a negative decimal because it was a negative fraction. All right, for the next one, it says find the product. Just remember, every single time you see this word product, that means to multiply. Okay, so you're going to be multiplying these fractions together. If you would, write the original problem down on your boards and then find the answer. All right, guys, looking at this, is there anything I can cross-reduce? Um, Yes, which ones? Three and six. The three and six, what do they become? One and two. One and two. Now that I have reduced as low as I can as far as cross-reducing, let's multiply the numerators. Uh, Luke, what is one times two? Two. Two. Jonathan, what is five times two? Ten. Abby, can this be reduced? Yes, because these are both even numbers, we are allowed to reduce that. I had a few people who left it as two-tenths, but what should it have been, class? One-fifth. One-fifth, okay? 
If you got two tenths on your quiz coming up on Monday, I would still give you partial credit. But remember, from now until the end of your math career, you have to always reduce or simplify your answers. All right, for this next one, once again, it says find the product. Guys, what does the word product mean? Um, multiply. multiply, okay? So you're multiplying together. Another thing that tells you to multiply are these parentheses right here, okay? Try to think of what you have to do whenever you're multiplying a mixed number. We talked about that at the beginning of class today. First things first, what do I have to do to that mixed number, guys? Make it, improper. Make it improper. Reagan, what would 1 and 3 fourths be as an improper fraction? 7 over 4. Okay, Jace, is there anything that I can cross-reduce? There is something that can cross-reduce. The 2 and 4, what do they become? 1 and 2. All right, now to Kobe, we're going to go ahead and multiply the numerators. What's 1 times 7? 7. Autumn, let's multiply the denominators. What's 3 times 2? 6. This is what some people left their answer at. What's wrong with that? It's, not it's improper. Please never leave me your answers improper, okay? Instead, divide that out. 7 divided by 6. When you multiply that out, you would find that this is 1 and 1 6. Should my answer be positive or negative? Positive. It is positive. Both of them started off as positive, so it will end as a positive. All right, for the next one, we're still finding the product. Guys, what does product mean? Multiply, all right? This time we are multiplying decimals, okay? So go ahead and figure this out. Negative 4.5 times 0.36. All right, guys, when I multiply these together, do I need to line up the decimal points? No. No, when you're multiplying, you do not line up the decimal points. But we do need to count how many numbers are behind the decimal point. On 4.5, how many numbers are behind or to the right of the decimal point? One. One. How about on 0.36? There are two numbers. So remember, we talked about this on Friday. Add those two together, 1 plus 2. How many numbers do I need to move over? Three numbers total, okay? So a lot of you, I think that's where you just made your mistake. Let's do this together and see what we get. Guys, what's 5 times 6? 30. 30. 0 on bottom, 3 on top. 4 times 6? 24. Plus 3? 27. Okay, we're done with that 3. Put your 0 as a placeholder. 5 times 3? 15. 5 on bottom, 1 on top, 4 times 3? 12. Plus 1? 13. 13. Now we're going to add all of these together. How many numbers do I need to move the decimal point over? 3. three. 1, 2, 3, which means the answer is 1.620. I'm going to put it off to the side. Let's go back to the original problem. How many negatives do you see there? 1. 1. So is my answer going to be positive or negative? Negative. Negative, because that's an odd number. There was only one, so my answer is going to be negative. Now, do I need this last zero right here? Yes. No. Any zeros at the end after a decimal point do not need to be there. I would not count it wrong if you left it there, but you do not need to keep zeros at the end when they come after a decimal point. So the correct answer is negative 1.62. If I was to read that correctly, it would be negative 1 and... 62 hundredths. Very good, because that's in the hundredths place. Okay, let's look at this. Remind me again, guys, should I line up decimal points? No. No. 5.1 times 28. All you do at this point is count how many numbers are behind the decimal point. Right here, how many numbers are behind that decimal point? One. Only one. How many numbers are behind that decimal point? None. Okay, add together one plus zero. One place is all you're going to move, okay? Now, let's go back to our original problem. A negative times a negative always equals a positive. positive. Because you have two negatives, we know our answer is going to come out as a positive. Let's multiply these together. Uh, Maddie, 1 times 8? 5 times 8? 40. Put your 0 as a placeholder. 1 times 2? 5 times 2. 10. Let's add these together. We get 8, 2, 4, and 1. How many places over do I need to move the decimal point? Only 1. So the correct answer, 142.8. All right, so right now the instructions say use number properties or shortcuts 
to multiply, okay? So remember, you're allowed to switch around the order of your numbers, and it can still be correct. Let's look at this one right here. I want you to turn that into a fraction. How do you turn that into a fraction? Put it over a 1, okay? So that just means over 1, and that means the same exact thing. Now, switch the orders around to get the reciprocals near each other. Remember, reciprocals, 4 fifths, the reciprocal would be 5 fourths, all right? Also remember, reciprocals, if I had 2 ninths, the reciprocal would be 9 over 2. So try to get the reciprocals to go near each other. All right, as I just looked at many of your boards, you did a lot of work. But remember, I am trying to teach you a shortcut here, okay? So put the reciprocals near each other. What is the reciprocal of negative 1 8? 8 over 1, okay? And it was a negative, so we're going to take that with it. And then we still have to make sure we bring this one down too. What does it mean when I have all these parentheses next to each other? We are multiplying. Very good, okay? Now let's see. Is there anything we can cross-reduce in this part right here, the eights, Jonathan, what do they become? Ones, okay? So once again, focusing on this part right here, what is negative one over one times negative one over one? Positive one, okay? So I'm gonna bring down that one. What else should I bring down? The negative two-fifths. Do I just bring it down just like that, guys? Why do I bring down the parentheses? Because it tells us to multiply. Guys, remember the facts. Anytime you multiply something times the number one. Class, what is five times one? Everybody, what is five times one? Five. What is ten times one? Ten. What is a half times one? Uh -huh. What is negative two-fifths times one? Very good. So the correct answer here should have been negative two-fifths. How many of you would say that was a lot easier than all the work you did? That's why you want to use commutative property, okay? Switch those things around, cancel things out, and that'll help you get your answer faster and hopefully accurately. All right, the last problem we're going to do right now, number seven, says to evaluate the expression when x equals six, y equals negative two, and z equals one-half. Class, what does it mean when x, y, and z are right next door to each other? Multiply. Multiply. This means x times y times z, okay? Now what you're going to do is plug each of these in. All right, so let's go ahead and plug some things in. Guys, what did you plug in for x? Six. Six. What about y? Negative two. Negative two. How about z? Uh, one half. One half. Okay, just looking at that right now, you can obviously already tell, is my answer going to be positive or negative? negative. It is negative because there's only one negative there. So let's just work from left to right. Class, what's 6 times 2? 12. 12, okay? So we know that that's going to be a negative 12 times 1 half. Here's what that means. Anytime you're multiplying by a half, you're cutting the number in half. So guys, what's half of 12? What is it? Six, and we already know it's going to be a negative, okay? Because some people were getting 60. Be careful with that, all right? Half of 12 is a six. It's not going to get bigger. If you want to, you could also put this over a one. You could cross-reduce the numbers. That would become a one. That would become a six. Six times one is six. We know our answer is negative, so the correct answer is negative six. If you got that correct, give yourself a point on your whiteboard. All right, so tonight we have a homework assignment. It is 2.4, which means it's on big ideas, okay? Since you're going on to big ideas to get your original problems, you are going to submit that on big ideas, okay? And then your homework also, if you haven't already bought your poster board, I want you to buy your poster board, bring it to class either tomorrow or Wednesday because on Thursday and Friday we are working on our projects in class, okay? So you want to type your sentences. Remember, all your sentences need to be typed and print out your pictures, whether you're printing them, whether you're getting actual pictures of you with your family, um, or you can draw your pictures, okay? But you do have to have a picture for each event. So when you come on um, Thursday and Friday, bring glue sticks, anything you want to creatively decorate your poster, okay? Because you're going to have time to work on it Thursday and Friday in class.